So Arsenal's hopes that rested on the shoulders of Spurs now rest on West Ham getting something from Manchester City on the final day of the season. If City draw against West Ham and Arsenal beat Everton, Arsenal will be champions. But a victory for Manchester City will see them win their fourth in a row. Uh, for more on this, let's welcome in, shall we? <laughs> Frank Leboeuf is with us, as is Jurgen Klinsmann. We'll hear from you guys in a moment. Overall, Craig, this wasn't a classic game full of quality in the end. Manchester City Well, I don't think enough. it was too dissimilar to the scenario at Old Trafford at the weekend. Yep. Where there was a, a, a huge element of, of caution about Man City, understanding the situation, the moment, what was needed. Uh, playing a better side, clearly, uh, than, than Arsenal were playing uh, in Tottenham. Uh, a bigger threat, and there were and there were scares along the way, and, and you know there was one or two scares at, at Old Trafford, maybe not as much as the one and one that the Sun had, but but I think it was always going to be that case. I said you know last week that th this was about as big a test as you could get out with you know the top four away from home at the team that are in fifth, at a team that will attack you, but do have some defensive defensive vulnerabilities. And it took a while, and I would imagine the half-time dressing room in Facetti would have been, listen, let's calm down, don't make mistakes, keep plugging away, we will get our goal, we will make a moment, and they did. And it came down the left, where uh, Phil Foden gets in, Bentoncourt got booked in the first half, couldn't make any sort of challenge. Well, he could have done, but he risked mm -hmm. a second yellow and a red, so decided against it, and that allowed a clear break down the left, and, and then from there, they got in behind, and... Hey, is it 20 yards or one yard where you score? It doesn't matter. And in the end, City, as expected, got, got the job done. And again, like Arsenal walking away from Old Trafford and getting in the bus, they did what they had to do. Yep. And this is exactly how City were today. Were they nervous in the first half, Stevie? How do you explain that? Because they gave the ball away a lot. I, th I, think, I think you'd have to say there was a little nerves. I've never quite seen City in such a big game giving the ball away as much as they did in the first half. But... As Craig's talking about the halftime team talk, it's about, look, we just keep doing what we do and it'll come because we've got the ability. And as simple as the first goal looks, the quality on the cross is frightening. Takes out three defenders, takes out the goalkeeper and it's an easy tap-in. And that's the difference to this, this Man City team. That's why they're going to win the league. They've just got that extra bit of quality that nobody else has. I think, I think Liverpool away would be the answer to how ragged they were the last time. Yes, you remember yeah, the true. game at yes. Anfield? Yeah. yeah. But I think, and by the way, they got outplayed that day, uh, uh, but that raggedness on the ball, and it was worse than this, was down to Liverpool. Mm -hmm. It was down to, the, they pressed and they harass, harassed and they put them under pressure and they were giving it away left, right and centre. This wasn't so much Tottenham pressing today, more than what was at stake. Yes. And any mistakes are going to be amplified because there's really very little time to put it right. And I think that's why we saw City uh, uh, like they were today. Yeah, we talk about City and we talked about them over recent weeks, Frank, uh, of them being machine-like almost going out there and 10, 15 minutes in, they're already 1-0 up. It was a very different style of victory today, wasn't it? Yes, it was, and um, uh, and it was more difficult for due to uh, Spurs also to, uh, and the way they play. I think they, they they've been good and they created danger and much more um, danger than uh, Manchester United last la, la, last week. So um, it's first due to them and also because as uh, as TV say maybe the nerves, uh, the tension that, because they knew that uh, that game was crucial that they had to win, but then also at at one nil I saw. Guardiola for the last 15 minutes not pushing his players to carry on playing the way they normally play. He was mm. more defensive and he was right to do so. He was more conservative and it's only fair. You are one game away to winning your first title in a row. So you have the right to deny a little bit of your philosophy. And uh, that was uh, interesting to see how because of maybe of the tension, but also because of a more defensive decision, Manchester City was more conservative today comparing to what we see normal, we normally see. Yeah, yeah, your boy Son could have done it. <laughs> yeah, I think you know it was obviously it was a scratchy, a, a tricky game the first half, um, almost like they, they feared to fail Man City in a certain way. They didn't know how to kind of take that approach because they could not afford to, to lose that game or go a goal down. Obviously, a tie would still keep everything open. But 
you could see them, you know, doing making passing mistakes that they usually don't do. Um, and uh, it took them really a long time to get into a rhythm, to get the clean of passing, to get uh, their, their guys going. And then the second half, I think they were far much much better off. Uh, I mean, a couple of key key moments certainly was, mm. you know, when Ederson needed to leave the field and Stefan Ortega came on. Stefan Ortega then did uh, three, four unbelievable saves against uh, uh, Sonnen, against Kudusevsky. Uh, that was a game winner. And then, obviously, Erlin Haaland showed up as well. Um, and uh, and that made then a big, big difference. But it was a very difficult game for Man City tonight uh, at uh, Tottenham. But well done at the end, you know, winning it 2-0 and then, uh, you know, going into the last uh, home game now against West Ham next week to, to, yeah, to finish everything off, which will not be easy either. I mean, it's not that they won the title already. Have we seen big decisions from the managers today? We'll get to the Spanish one in a minute at Real Madrid. But... You know, we saw Bentinko's reaction. Maybe that was a, maybe it was a bit of being sobbed, and maybe it was a bit of the frustration that he couldn't make the challenge mm. on the touchline to, to stop the first goal, which ultimately got Man City rolling. And he, I mean, I've rarely seen a player, Stevie, kick a chair or anything on the bench like that. Really, who clearly didn't want to come off. Yeah. But that, again, we're talking about big decisions. So the managers looked at it and thought he's probably talked to the physio and thought he, he's saying he's okay to continue. But we're going to come under pressure probably in this game and I don't want a keeper who's carrying a knock, as good as he is, having to make the big save or saves before the end of the game when he's not 100% fit. So the manager makes a big call, which clearly has been the right one and we see we saw from the clip Ederson's uh, reaction coming off, not best pleased. But that, that's why these guys get the big box. He yeah. could easily sat there, go out the all and say, ah, I'll let him continue. But it makes it easier when you've got a second goalie who actually Absolutely. would probably be playing in most other teams. Because when Edison was out for that period of time, I mean, it, it, it was seamless. Yeah. You know, you, as good as Edison is, there didn't seem much of a difference when Ortega went in. So it makes it an easier decision on a game like today for the manager just turn around and say, no, we can't take a chance. We know exactly what Ortega can Dad. do. Get him in just in case. Go on, Frank. Uh, yeah, I, I think for me is the is one of the most crucial decisions that um, uh, Guardiola had to to make today. Um, f conf being confronted uh, to a goalkeeper who doesn't want to go out, who shows it to the world, I want to carry on. But uh, being stubborn uh, was the best idea of of Guardiola. I mean, if there is a man of the match. It's between Ortega and maybe Guardiola because those two guys made the difference. Guardiola because he decided to uh, substitute Ederson and that was a crucial again decision. And Ortega was the man of the match. I mean, the, the three saves that he made and especially the one against Son. He's thinking there. He thought it was... Yes. He's thinking yeah. within that split second, Guardiola, that all of a sudden that one mistake is handing the initiative straight over to Arsenal. And then that's, you know, that moment is gone. It just shows you the emotions. And then, obviously, his, his decision came up big. Jürgen, we, we were talking, the boys were talking when we watched the game live and did, we're looking at the highlight. Are you surprised that Son chose to go across the goalkeeper as opposed to putting it into that near post? Yeah, I actually thought that Sonny keeps on going and dribbles the goalkeeper and puts it in an empty, uh, empty net. That, that is what I kind of felt like when he ran at Ortega. But obviously, you know, the way Ortega stood him up, you know, stayed calm, waited, 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 maybe made uh, Sonny a little bit nervous. And uh, he decided then to, uh, to shoot already quite early. But usually these type of uh, occasions, uh, these type of chances, Sonny puts away blindly. So it was mm. a fantastic save by Stefan Ortega, no doubt about it. But as, as you guys say, rightfully, so it's, it's very courageous by Pep Guardiola to make the decision, take Edison off in that moment, you know, he's full of adrenaline, he's fully pumped up, he wants to continue and bring uh, Stefan Ortega on. This is, uh, this is the right thing to do. We obviously don't know what they discussed on the bench, especially the medical staff. You know, if the medical staff had some discussions about a uh, possible concussion or some sorts of risk, then obviously you as a head coach, you will, you will always follow the advice of your medical staff, of your doctor. And maybe that was the case then, uh, but uh, obviously it made a huge difference, you know, especially the save, the save against Son and, and the two previous saves are also against uh, Kulusevsky, uh, outstanding mm. by Stefan Ortega, who, you know, we got to look at that kid. That kid played majority of his career in Germany in the second Bundesliga and Bielefeld. 
you know, he's now since two years there at, at Man City, and this is his moment. This is, was his moment, and uh, huge congratulations to him. Uh, Just on the on the son chance, you know, you, people always hear us on here talking about confidence, and when particularly forwards are full of confidence, they're in, they're, they're scoring goals for fun. Everything's coming easy for them. When you when you're in that state of mind, everything's clearer. Everything becomes really clear. You, you can focus on everything. You seem to have a lot more time. And the fact that Son right now is struggling in front of goal tells you that he doesn't see that opening. Because if he does, there's no question mm. he picks it out. Mm. He clear, in my opinion, is he's, he's kind of decided early on what he's going to do because he doesn't see the big picture because he's not in form. Jürgen, who did you want to win this game? I mean, obviously, it's Spurs... You know, they they had still a chance, you know, for for maybe reaching the the Champions League spot there. Um, so they were they were hungry for a win as well. Even if obviously in the back of your mind is you know you don't want to kind of have Arsenal win the the Premier League title. <laughs> but uh, um, I think the the way you know it really reflected well the entire mood of both teams. In the first half, you know, making so many mistakes, passing mistakes, and it was so scratchy. It was so. No rhythm. Now that you could feel the tension, you could feel the nervousness of both teams. You know, not making uh, too many mistakes here, and then openly, uh, hopefully, you know, it it ends up differently in the second half, which it did. Then and and uh, things move the right direction for for Man City. Uh, and then you count as a manager, you count really uh, on on your your key players. And and for Man City, besides now, obviously, Stefan Ortega. Um, it means you know you need uh, some some difference maker out there. And I, I thought Phil Foden. Played a very, very good game there. Mm. Obviously, the way he prepared then the, the first goal was impressive, even if Bentancur, as, uh, uh, as you guys said, you know, uh, could not stop him because he was already, already on a yellow card. And then Erling Haaland showed up. He showed up, you know, with two goals today, you know, made it 38 goals in all competitions, 28 in the Premier League, and he proved his point again. And he also had his moments, you know, throughout, throughout the season where... You know, people were critical on him and they thought he could do better. Uh, but he showed, uh, showed up today and, and uh, scored his two goals and, and everybody's happy now in Manchester. And Postacoglu spoke <clears throat> afterwards, Jürgen, about how the atmosphere did affect the players. He said, look, when we've scored late goals, we've been lifted by the crowd. It's because it was much flatter today because what was at stake, he says it did translate to what happened on the pitch. Can you empathise with that? <laughs> Yeah, I can emphasize with that because nobody at Spurs wants Arsenal to win the title. Period. Period. That's just the way it is, you know. And maybe they say, no, I would rather have Man City win it today, you know, and go back home and have fish and chips and and yeah, call it a day, <laughs> uh, but and give away the game because it it is it is the main rival is Arsenal. They look mainly at Arsenal and. And uh, um, and that makes it a very kind of tricky situation in the stadium, in the, at the atmosphere. They're maybe not as pushy as they usually would be, uh, mm. and to kind of give you the energy and give you give you the stimulation to to go at Man City and to create more chances. And it took the Spurs uh, a, a long time. I mean, yeah, the only one chance in the first half, and then obviously the, the chances that Ortega then saved in the second half. But um, yeah, it makes a difference. Uh, Ange is totally totally right saying that. I Convenient excuse, is it? I don't, yeah, I think so. I don't, uh, yeah, it's not, it's, I don't think it's anything to do with the crowd. I don't quite understand it all. Yeah, geographically, it's, it's a huge rival. It's a big rivalry because of, there's only a few miles between them and, and North London. But, but let's be honest about it. It isn't, hasn't really many times been a rivalry because Arsenal have been, been dominant. It's a bit like Manchester United and Man City. Now, now it's the blue half of, are clearly flying. But for years and years and years... City were yo-yoing between the leagues. You know, worry about what you're doing. Worry. Don't, if Arsenal... You had to win this game. Like, Hong Min Son is not missing that chance on purpose. Do you know what I'm saying? They wanted to win the game. The, the fans wanted them to win the game. The, the, there was still an outside chance of the Champions League. Right, this parochial sort of tribalism is... I, I, I can't even understand it in a way. It's almost like, you know, an excuse. Well, you know, we didn't want to... We didn't want to win that game anyway because we're going to stop. What Arsenal are doing and what others are doing is to be admired. And I think Spurs have to try and worry about themselves, which their manager will, and, and, and reach that level. But in terms of a rivalry, I think Spurs need to give their head a wobble. They, they have to, they're aspiring 
to do some of the things that Arsenal have done in the last, I don't know how many years. I mean, obviously, it's been a barren spell for Arsenal since the, the, since the uh, great Wenger years, but... Boy, they're, they're on the, whether they win the league or not, they are on their way back. Frank, would this muted atmosphere have affected you as a player? Uh, if, I was a, if I was a Tottenham player? Mm. No, no, not really. I mean, you have to do your job. I mean, you, you, you play for your colour, you are paid by the club, and you don't care about the rivalry. You play at home, you want to win. You have your pride, your pride, sorry, you have your ego, and uh, at the end of the day, especially if you have to play for maybe a, a spot in a, in Champions League next, next season, you don't care about that rivalry. You play, you do it, and you don't need the, the, the fans. I mean, I, I played the same way I played my game in front of 2,000 people than in front of 80,000 people because I was playing for my club and for my teammates and for, and for the fans who were there, um, but never because of some calculation about what could have happened and would have, who could please the fans or not. Uh, I think it, it never bothered me. Uh, I always wanted to, to win a game. And it's like West Ham. West Ham have to fight uh, to maybe get a draw uh, because it's, uh, it's part of their job and uh, you cannot faint playing. Uh, let's talk about then uh, the odds going into the final day of the season. It will surprise no one that Manchester City are heavy favourites. That's interesting. At uh, 35 to 2 on. So that means you have to put on $35 to win $2. Uh, Arsenal, meanwhile, come in <laughs> at uh, 9 to 1. Stevie's pulling a face. You can't see it. <sighs> Well, you look at West Ham. You look at West Ham's. You look at the head-to-head -head going up to the Etihad. Yeah. I think it was three 0 last year. There's been a, certainly looking back the last four or five visits. There's been no. I don't think unless I miss them, been no victories. There's been a couple of close calls where City have won by the odd goal. Uh, but it, it's hard to see. But I mean, I, I go back to the 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 year where Mancini won the title when Aguero scored that late goal. Nobody thought. Everybody thought, including the Man City fans probably, that they were turning up for a procession. A foregone conclusion, right? Man United were at Sunderland. Man City were playing QPR, who, by the way, had Joey Barton sent off in the first half for, for stupidity. This was all going to be a walk in the park. And it was anything but. So you can never, ever say... This is, and, and by the way, West Ham are a much better team. QPR were fighting to avoid relegation yep. that day. So you just can't say this is a matter of turning up that's, and rolling them over. That's why the 35 to 1 2 seems way wrong. Right. Way wrong. I, I'm with Craig entirely. We've we seen in this game tonight, and I know it's different when you're away from home to when you're at home, but we've seen that as good as we think Man City are, they can be affected by the situation. Because there's no question in the first half, they were. The passing was off. And you can only put it down to the, the, a little bit of tension. And so, even though they're at home against West Ham, there has to be tension there. And if there's a team that you really don't, you know, who could be spoilers, it's West Ham. You know, from nowhere they get results against teams. Because they've got some pace going forward mm. and they can steal goals. So I'm just a little surprised at the odds. Well, you might have There's had no question the favourites, the big favourites, but they're not they're not 35 to win two favourites. Well, you were on the field when that. I don't want to bring it up, but the Liverpool Arsenal game, right? The crowd. All right, uh, this was two great Liverpool sides. Liverpool at home, and I don't think they could believe what happened. I have never seen the disbelief on supporters' faces that I saw that day. Yeah, Mancini was on his knees. And I mean on his knees in the touchline, right? Almost in tears. It'd gone. They'd blown it. And I was look, looking at the Man City fans, both uh, beneath the commentary position oh, and on the it. monitors on the other side. And they couldn't believe it. And, and so the great thing is about all sports is that these things can happen. And the nerves, the emotions. And I think that's for, if you're an Arsenal, if you're in the Arsenal camp, you say, look, we have to go out and dispose of Everton, right? The last thing we want to do is throw up some anomaly of a, a result. Everton beat us at home and City somehow lose. So they have to go out, dispatch this Everton side, and then they can't do any more than that. But 
it's not a for it is far from a foregone conclusion. And we've got a lot of time, of course, between now and then to discuss that. Just a word. Well, I'm not on... talking about that again. Well, I'm not going to ask week. you. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, who's going to be talking about it? I don't know. Someone else, not you. <laughs> well, who? You just sit in the corner quietly. <laughs> well, thank, oh, thank, <laughs> well, well, first, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, Jürgen, just a word on Spurs, obviously. Started the season so well with that unbeaten run. It has somewhat come apart, hasn't it, uh, towards the end of the season. How would you sum it up, this first, first campaign in charge for Postacoglu? I think I would sum it up very positive still. I mean, obviously, they were leading in the beginning of uh, the season and that gave uh, big, big hopes to all Spurs supporters. Or oh, maybe we are in the run for the title, but uh, everyone that is realistic knew that, you know, getting into the, the, the top four would be fantastic. Being now fifth and finishing fifth in the table is still a very positive uh, result, I think. Um, he's done a, a lot, a lot of good work. Um, he obviously has a philosophy of play that comes above everything that he often often talks about. Uh, I think they have to do some work in the off season, you know, and get some uh, two, three, four quality players into that roster um, to make him a little bit more competitive, also for for Europe. Overall, I think uh, a positive season. Um, in the beginning, they dreamed of of more, but uh, I think overall it's okay.